Hello and welcome to another episode of Lockdown Wolves. This is the post-game podcast for the Timberwolves' win over the Detroit Pistons. We're going to break down a balanced performance for the Wolves. Good games from Jaden McDaniels, Kyle Anderson, Nas Reed, Rudy Gobert turned in a double-double. And just a, a, a nice professional win that got progressively better as the game went on. Lots to get to today. It's all upcoming. Welcome in. You are Locked On Wolves. You are Locked On Timberwolves. Your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Lockdown Wolves podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Beacon. I'm the host of Lockdown Wolves. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's 200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown to get started. Happy Thursday, everybody. It's a victory Thursday after a Wolves win over the Pistons on Wednesday night at Target Center to cap off a nice homestand for Minnesota. A, uh, I mean, they won this thing by 15. It was, a, I don't want to say it was touch and go. It was never really, it was never a doubt, right? They never trailed by, I don't think, any more than five. But they were a bit disengaged, disinterested early, and had a quiet game, and yet they still ended up winning by 15. It was a professional win in a lot of ways. We'll get into that. Uh, but lots to get to. I want to talk slow-mo. I want to talk Jaden, Nas. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's get into it. But first, I guess there will be some further ado. A uh, thank you, first of all, for making Lock That Wolves your first listen every day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere, including YouTube, as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. Wherever you listen to podcasts, you can find Lock That Wolves. You can also watch on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. And you can follow an X at Lockdown T Wolves and also at B Beacon with two B's, two E's, C K E N. A reminder about the postcast. Not only do we cover your team every day right here on Lockdown Wolves, but we also give you instant episodes after every single game. Check out the Lockdown Wolves postcast right here on the Lockdown Wolves podcast feed, plus streaming live after each game on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota YouTube channel. Get rapid reaction to all the biggest moments with the Lockdown Wolves postcast. Of course, after the Pistons game. Tyler joined Luke uh, on Lockdown Sports Minnesota. The episode before this one in your audio feed would have been that episode. Uh, so go check that out if you haven't already. The one before that was the Minnesota basketball party with uh, several basketball personalities that we recorded on Wednesday. So lots of stuff in your feed from the last 24 hours. Of course, this show daily, Monday through Friday. So again, a big thank you for making this show your first listen every single day. All right. Let's go ahead and get into Wolves Pistons. Of course, Detroit, the worst team in the league. And uh, the Wolves beat them in Detroit in early uh, January. And it was it was uh, not an easy win. The Wolves had to pull away in the fourth quarter. This one was a little bit easier than that. Although Cade Cunningham didn't play last time around, and he did play in this game. And Cade was very good. Um, he was he was solid. He scored 32. And of course, not a whole lot of a whole lot of talent around him, frankly. Um not a whole, I mean, Jalen Duran had some nice moments in this game. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Jaden Ivey didn't play at all in this game. So this was, it was basically Cade against the world. Nobody else scored more than 14 points. Nobody else attempted more than nine shots, but Cade Cunningham was 11 to 30, excuse me, 11 to 23 for 32 points in this game. And I thought he looked good. I mean, he only played 29 minutes, but outside of that, the Pistons didn't give a whole lot. Um, they didn't really do much offensively in this game. They had 25 points in the first quarter. And I actually thought the Wolves were pretty decent defensively. There were a couple of straight line drives Detroit got early. And uh, Minnesota, thankfully, had a bit of a push at the end of the quarter to give themselves a 30 to 25 lead at the end of the first. But this was just a two point game at halftime. The Wolves struggled offensively in the second quarter. It was pretty much Nas Reed in the first half, a little bit of Jaden McDaniels. I think Jaden had, uh, he had what? 10 points at the break. Nas had, um, you know, Nas was kind of the offense in the first half, but the Wolves just couldn't hit from outside the arc. That was the biggest problem in this game. And especially early. I mean, that was just a major issue for Minnesota for the game. The Timberwolves shot just 11 of 36 from outside the arc. Now, remember against Golden State on Sunday, the Wolves shot 21 of 40. So they were over 50% from outside the arc. This was this is the law of averages, right? Like take Sunday in this game and 
smash them together. And that's pretty much where the Wolves are this season, right? 11 to 36 in this game for just 30.6%. A lot of those misses were in the first half. Um, and, and I mean, Nas for the game was one of eight. Conley was one of five. Ant was one of four outside the arc. So uh, that really it was the Wolves missing threes and then a few lapses defensively and, and a little bit of offensive rebounding for Detroit that kept them in the game. And it was, again, just a two-point game at halftime. The Wolves really started to pull away in the third quarter. And um, this was a lot of Kyle Anderson, weirdly enough. Um, and, and, you know, a big part of it is Detroit's not exactly a great defensive team. And, you know, if they go ahead and deploy the same strategy as so many other teams and kind of, uh, we'll say, sag off of, to be generous, sag off of Kyle Anderson, basically don't guard him. Well, Slomo could could beat a team of bad defenders if you're not going to guard him. And so that's kind of what happened in the third quarter for the game. Kyle Anderson had 14 points on five of eight shooting. And I believe most of that was in the third quarter. I'm see if I can pull it up real quick. Uh, pretty much all of it actually was in the, was in the third quarter of this game. Um, I'm going to pull it up real fast here. Uh, let's see. He had one, two, four, six, eight, nine. Nine of his 14 points from the third quarter of this game for Kyle Anderson. So, I mean, he was basically the reason the Wolves were able to build what was a 12 point lead going to the fourth. And uh, they coasted from there. I mean, Anthony Edwards didn't play in the fourth quarter. Ant for the game was very quiet. We'll talk more about that here in a minute. Uh, but, but it was slow mo in the third that helped the Wolves build that lead. And then the Wolves, uh, you know, there were, I don't know what, two and a half, two and a half to three minutes of garbage time at the very end of the game. Uh, big picture takeaways before we get into some like more in the weeds individual stuff. I would call this a professional win. Yeah, it was disappointing. They were only up two at halftime against the worst team in the league. But given how badly they were shooting the three, how, I don't know, disengaged is such a, a negative word. I, I don't think Ant was like, I don't think he was actually disengaged. He was just had a quiet game, right? After a couple of nice buckets early, he had that play that where he pivoted like 14 times and ended up hitting a fadeaway jumper from just inside the free throw line. Just a quiet game for Ant. Given all those factors to only be down two at halftime and then have the ability to still win by 15, or excuse me, up two at halftime, uh, I thought it was a professional win. Never was it really in doubt. Never was there really a moment where it was like, oh, shoot, they're going to let this thing slip away like the Wolves circa just last season. Remember, the Pistons beat the Wolves twice last year. And the Pistons went, what, 17 and 65, I think, last season. This year's team is almost surely going to have a worse record than that. But there was a 65 loss Pistons team last year that beat the Wolves twice. And the whole thing last year with the Pistons and the Hornets and the Spurs and all these bad teams that were beating the Wolves half the time, literally, that hasn't been an issue this year. You know, they did lose to the Spurs once. I think they lost to Charlotte once. Like, there's a couple of mixed in there. But their overall record against the bottom feeders is much, much better this season. Never did it feel like that. The Wolves never trailed by more than five points in this game. And it was briefly, I think, in the second and briefly maybe early third quarter. And then the Wolves kind of turned it around and it, it was never really an issue. Um, I want to talk about a couple other factors that the Wolves you know, a couple of the wolves dominated and then also get into some of the ant stuff. We'll talk studs and duds. I want to talk more. Um, Nas, I thought was very good in this game. I want to talk Rudy. So a lot to get to here still. And we'll close the show today by talking individual studs and duds. So all that's coming up here next. Today's episode of lockdown wolves is brought to us by our friends over at Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure might be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class-exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. Nissan's incredible lineup also includes the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder. It has room for up to eight, an expansive cargo capacity, and advanced available 4x4 capability. With 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds towing, when adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Today's episode is also brought to us by our friends at Amazon Fire TV. Amazon Fire TV is awesome. I have it on multiple TVs, not just 
uh, I do have an Amazon uh, TV with it built in, an Amazon Fire TV itself, but I also have the uh, the Fire TV stick in a couple of TVs, one that's not a smart TV, old TV, yes, and then another one where I just prefer the interface for Amazon Fire than I do um, you know, the interface that's currently on that TV. So Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights, in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs. Again, as well as the Fire TV Stick, you can plug into your existing TV. It provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, plus free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball, baseball opening day is today, this Thursday, today, or the college basketball tournament, which is back in action today as well, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Lockdown and most of the pro leagues, big pro leagues, and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the latest in the world of sports. That includes college basketball, the NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos, and more. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com slash Locked on Fire TV. Do you watch Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? And if so, do you have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? I'm sure you do, because I do. Make the switch to Locked on Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked on Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right. So some takeaways here from this game. The Timberwolves absolutely dominated points in the paint. Should not be surprising because, uh, I mean, like the Pistons, like I like Chemezi Metu, but he's a 10-day contract guy, you know, uh, for the worst team in the league. And Jalen Duran has some size, but, uh, and I like him again as like a, a bit like rotation type player, but man, and James Wiseman too, by the way, like comes off, like he's not, he's not good necessarily, but they've got a little bit of size. Just the Wolves completely dominated them, them in the paint. This was a good Rudy Gobert game. It wasn't like a, a groundbreaking Rudy game, but he was, he was very good. 11 points, 14 rebounds, a perfect five of five shooting had an and one mixed in there on a tough lefty reverse layup, which is not something I don't think I've ever said. I know I've never said about Rudy Gobert. He was also a plus 20 in this game. Nobody else on the Wolves was better than a plus 14. Um, Rudy controlled the paint on both ends of the floor. And outside of a couple early kind of easy buckets, Jaden McDaniels got beat on a straight line drive. Like there were a few of those where the Wolves just kind of stuck in mud defensively early in the game. Ultimately, the Wolves ended up outscoring the Pistons on points of the paint 60 to 34, nearly doubling them up in this game, uh, which was really, really good to see. Um, so dominant in the paint, some shot blocking there from Minnesota. The Wolves had, I guess they only had three blocks in this game, but they were all uh, or both of the Rudy blocks were emphatic. Um, Conley, actually, Mike Conley had the other two Wolves block in this game, but they had they had three blocks. They controlled the paint by 24 points. One area that I was I mentioned when I previewed the the game on Wednesday show is I said I didn't want the Wolves to get into a track meet because of the whole, you know, the worst team should try and create a higher variance environment where they've got a chance to win, right? Like take your shot, essentially, is is the the like crude way to summarize that. Well, the Wolves didn't get sucked in. And kudos to them for that. They actually lost fast break points, which I'm totally fine in, in this particular game. Um, I just accidentally clicked off it. I think they lost them 16 to 12 or 12 to 16. Uh, 11 to my goodness, 11 to six. That's what I meant to say. 11 to six. So they gave up 11 fast break points to the Pistons only had six of their own. My general message in the, in the, after the cat injury version of the wolves is play faster, shoot more threes, not necessarily against a team like the Pistons. The Pistons want to play fast. They want to create a higher variance, uh, you know, environment. Now the Pistons are not a good three point shooting team. So if they want to shoot more threes, fine. I mean, you know, like the three point shooting thing, I don't really care who the opponent is in that situation, unless it's a team that shoots just a ton of threes, in which case the more threes you can shoot, the better. But besides that, like fine, just shoot more threes. But like the Pistons percentage wise are bottom five in the league in terms of percentage as a team. Um, and they also don't have some of the guys that were better three point shooting on their team, better three point shooters on the team earlier in the year, like Bogdanovich, right? Um, 
so that doesn't bother me, but I was worried about them getting sucked into a fast paced game. Not like super worried, but a little worried about it. They did it. They lost fast break points. I was cool with it. They ended up holding the Pistons to just 38% shooting in part because Minnesota did as they've done for most of the year, done a really good job getting back in transition or did a really good job. I should say getting back in transition and uh, themselves, they just were able to get good shots in the half court. And again, primarily in the paint. They scored 60 points in the paint in this game, 60 of their 106, which was huge because they only got to the line 16 times, the Wolves did. And they also only shot 30%, 31% from outside the arc. So the points in the paint were massive in this game. And um, they didn't need to get, get out in transition to try and force the issue and try and get easy buckets. That's something that's going to be more important you know, next time out against the Denver Nuggets or like when they play teams like the Suns or, or whatever. Like, when there's teams that, especially without Carl Anthony Towns, you're going to be undermanned in terms of offensive firepower. And obviously, Ant's got to do more than score nine points on 11 shots against those opponents. Against a far inferior opponent like the Pistons, play your half-court game, work on your half-court offense, allow guys like Kyle Anderson, Jaden McDaniels, Nas Reed to get their shots up and score some buckets. And that's what happened in this game. So kudos to the Wolves for dominating the paint, not getting sucked into too much of a fast break fest. Um, and, and doing a good job overall in the half court in terms of offense. Turnover-wise, they were sloppy early. They were losing the turnover battle for the majority of the game and ended up tied at 12 turnovers apiece in this game uh, for the two teams. But early in the game, it was a concern. They cleaned it up a little bit. And uh, again, solid defensively, forcing the Pistons into 12 turnovers, just 28% shooting and 38% or 28% outside the arc for Detroit and 38% overall for the game. The Wolves did foul a lot. This was yet another game. And this is perhaps a topic for a show. Uh, I don't know. Maybe today's Thursday show. Maybe Friday. Maybe we'll talk about this on Friday. Um, since the Rudy Gobert money signed now nearly three weeks ago, I don't know that the Wolves have out free throwed an opponent. Uh, if they have, it's only been once or twice. Like it, it's the differential is not great. I'm not saying that there's for sure a correlation, but uh, we'll talk. We'll talk more about it on Friday. But in this game, the Wolves are out free throwed attempted by Detroit 25 to 16. And I mean, like Detroit gets the line a decent amount, especially for a bad team and a bad offense. Uh, but they're actually dead last in defensive free throw. Rate. Detroit commits a ton of shooting fouls. Now the Wolves had a lot of and one opportunities in the second half of this game, uh, which is part of the reason why, like if you look at actual personal fouls, the Wolves only committed three more than Detroit, but they attempted nine less free throws. That's in part because they got some and ones toward the end of the game or third and fourth quarter, I guess, second half overall. But overall, Minnesota was a minus nine in both free throw attempts and makes in this game, but they still won the game by 15. Um, so again, back to overall takeaways, the role player thing in the half court, Kyle Anderson did some damage when Ant was, you know, playing off the ball a little bit more and uh slow-mo scored off the bounce. Like we talked about, he scored off the bounce. They gave him space and he made them pay. That's not necessarily going to be a big deal in the playoffs, but he also pitched in those five assists and had four rebounds and two steals. Like it was another well-rounded Kyle Anderson game, which we've talked about. We've seen, we've seen an increase in those games from slow-mo here over the last several weeks and really dating back to the, to the all-star break. But remember the last two games, Slow-mo turned in ten, identical 10, 6, and 5 lines with three stocks in each game. Going back to Cleveland on Friday, 10, 6, and 5. 10 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals. Sunday against Golden State, 10 points, 6 rebounds, 5 assists, a block, and 2 steals. So three stocks. In this game, a little bit more scoring, 14 points, exact same 5 assists. He only had 4 boards and 2 steals. But effectively the same performance in this game. And, and again, that score and volume came up in the third quarter when the Wolves really needed him to do it. Kyle Anderson has now scored in double figures in five straight games and seven of the last eight games. The entire month of February, he scored in double figures once. The entire month of January, longer month, more games. He scored in double figures three times. The entire month of December, two times. The entire month of November, one time. Let's, let's, let's say that again. October, November combined, two instances of double figure scoring for Kyle Anderson. All of December, twice. All of January three times all of February one time already in March. The month is not over. Kyle Anderson has scored in double figures seven times and all seven have come in the last eight games and he's got six in a row now, excuse me, five in a row. Now he scored a double figure. So slow-mo is obviously more confident post trade deadline. And he's also 
like since the cat injury, by the way, all of the scoring uptick has come since the cat injury. All of it. The first game post cat injury, he had three points. Since then, he's got double figures in seven of the next eight games. Uh, so you could say it this way also overall, seven of the nine games post cat injury, or, or I guess eight of the 10 games post cat injury, he's scored at double figures. And it's mostly because he's playing more at the four and less at the three. That's a big chunk of it because of the lineups he's playing with more than anything else, right? The Wolves are able to use him differently. He's able to be deployed differently. All right, let's close the show by talking to individual studs and duds. And uh, that's how we'll, that's how we'll end today's program. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our friends at BetterHelp. The show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased on your life. So today I want to say how I really feel about something. You might even be thinking about the same thing this week. It may seem trivial, but after all, this is a Wolves podcast. And for me, I listen to a national podcast with two analysts who I enjoy listening to, not necessarily like specifically about basketball, but overall on a large podcast network. And they talked about which Western conference teams you'd like to have, or you would like to be moving forward. Right. And the Timberwolves were third on one of those lists and fourth on the other list. And I get why Denver would be first because they have the best player in the world, but putting a team like the San Antonio Spurs out of the wolves seems crazy. I know Webby's great. Is he going to be better than Anthony Edwards? Could he be better than Anthony Edwards? Yeah, absolutely he could. But also, like, the way that San Antonio is built around Wemby so far, which I know we're a year into this, like, I don't know that we can give them too much credit. This isn't exactly the same. I know it theoretically is the same people making decisions, but the decisions the last few years haven't been the same as they were during the dominant Spurs era with Pop and Tim Duncan and Tony Parker and everybody, right? So I thought the Wolves were disrespected a little bit. I think the Wolves should very clearly be a top easily be a top three team in the West in terms of the future outlook. I don't care about the cap situation because you have Anthony Edwards and you have one or both of Rudy and Kat for the, at least the next couple of years. It's a really great situation to be in. I might be nitpicking, but hey, it still got me a little bit frustrated. And look, most of us have bigger problems than complaining about the Wolves being third or fourth on some list, but therapy looks different for everyone. It's still important to get your chest, get things off your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. Visit betterhelp.com slash lockdown NBA to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash lockdown NBA. All right, let's talk individual studs and duds for Wolves Pistons. We haven't really talked about, I guess I talked about Nas in passing. Nas was great early in this game. He gets a stud because without him, the Wolves wouldn't be leading at halftime. They scored 30 points in the first quarter. It was Nas being a little bit creative off the dribble is, is kind of what did this. And by the way, Nas was 8 of 10 on two-point attempts in this game. He was 1 of 8 outside the arc and 8 of 10 on two-pointers. Really, a fan. we know Nas doesn't shoot mid-range jumpers. He just doesn't. Uh, so this was in the paint. You know, Rudy only attempted five shots in this game. Only had 11 points. So those 60, and Ant only had nine points, right? So those 60 points in the paint, uh, what? Nas had three points outside the arc, two at the line. So um, I guarantee you 16 of those were Nas Reed, right? Without looking at a shot chart. Because he only made one three and two free throws. So 21 minus... Minus five is is 16. He scored 16 points in the paint, was eight of 10 on two-point shots. Uh, only had one offensive rebound, too. So this was off the dribble, a uh, couple of post moves, a uh, couple of lefty layups. Um, just an impressive Nas performance. 21 and 10 plus four assists, zero turnovers. And he had six the other day. I think that Golden State game, he had six turnovers in. And Nas had zero miscues in this game. A really, really strong Nas game once again. Uh, since he's joined the starting lineup, he's been fantastic. Uh, I'm going to give a stud to Jaden McDaniels. Jaden was really, really balanced in this game. He finished with 20 points on 8 of 14 shooting, 3 of 7 outside the arc. He was 5 of 7 on 2-point shots. So 5 of 7 on 2s, 3 of 7 on 3s, 4 rebounds. And by quarter, Jaden had 8 points in the first quarter, so he and Nas carried the load for the Wolves. They scored 30 in the first frame and only 17 in the second. Jaden had 8 points in the first quarter, Two in the second, 
five in the third, and five in the fourth. So 20 points spread out at least five points in three different quarters for Jaden McDaniels. And that's how he's got to do it. And it's important for him to continue to build that confidence. Remember, he's gone through these, like, just pre-All-Star break. He was having a rough patch. Had a couple really good games right before the break. Was pretty miserable after the break. And now, all of a sudden, three of the last four games, going back to that Denver game, so really this homestand, he scored a double figures, 15 or more points in three of the last four games, and is just looking much more confident. He had that one for 20 stretch from outside the arc, went four of six against Denver, two of four against Cleveland, two of six against Golden State, fine, three of seven in this game. So he's pulling that three-point percentage back up north of league average, which is what the Wolves need him to do. He's also looked overall more engaged defensively. Not that he's ever like truly disengaged. There were a couple of rough possessions early in this one. I still don't think his consistency is where it was last year. I think maybe the, the highs have been higher than last year even for Jaden, but the consistency is not quite there night in and night out. I'm not super worried about that because he didn't get to play in the playoffs last year. Jaden and Ant are both this way. Like when they need to ratchet it up, when the lights are brighter, they're going to play better. They're at least going to play harder, right? Even if the pressure potentially gets to them offensively, like defensively, those guys are both going to play really hard. And you add in to kill Alexander Walker and team defenders like Mike Conley and Kyle Anderson, this team is going to be so good defensively in the playoffs. Like we're talking like lights out good in the playoffs for sure. Um, and I'm really excited to see that. So slow-mo gets, or excuse me, um, I was talking about Jaden. So Jaden gets a stud. Nas gets a stud. I'm going to give the other one a slow-mo. 14 points, five assists, four rebounds, two steals, five of eight shooting. He was also four or five at the line. Was a plus 13 in this game. We talked a lot about him last segment, so I won't spend, spend much more time there. But uh, Nas, slow-mo, and Jaden. Rudy Gobert would be next. If I was doing a fourth, he'd be an honorable mention. A nice 11, 14, and four assists and two block performance for Rudy. Did have three turnovers. And, uh, you know, he did only have 11 points, but it was a good Rudy game. The bench overall, very good. Nikhil Alexander-Walker, 11 points, three made threes. Jerome McLaughlin, another two made threes, two of three outside the arc, eight points for J-Mac. Weirdly, he didn't have any assists in 14 minutes. Uh, he played well. Monte Morris, good again. Just, you know, nothing eye-popping there, just solid. They're in this nice rotation where Morris and McLaughlin are both now playing kind of 12 to 16 minutes each per game. They each played 14 minutes in this game. And it's nice that at this point, Chris Finch just trusts both of them. This was pretty much a, a nine-man rotation. TJ Warren did see like five minutes of rotation minutes in the first half. I think it was early second quarter, mid-second quarter. Um, but otherwise, he didn't play in the second half until garbage time. So pretty much a nine-man rotation with TJ Warren as the 10th guy at this stage. And of course, if and when Carl Anthony Towns returns in the playoffs, TJ Warren will be definitely on the outside of the rotation looking at it. It'll be interesting to see how those minutes split up. Uh, that's, you know, three weeks down the road, hopefully. So, um, all right. That's all we have for you about this one. I do want to do a bit of a free throw study on Friday's show. I'm looking forward to that. That's going to be interesting. We'll also preview Wolves Nuggets. Of course, we just saw Denver last week, but uh, the Wolves head out to Denver, uh, and that's where they'll be Friday night. And then, um, the Wolves play again on Sunday. I think I have that right. Uh, I'm going to double check that. In Denver, Friday night, back home. So it's a one-game road trip. Back home to face the Bulls on Sunday, who they lost to uh, last time around. So we'll talk a little bit about that Friday, too, since I won't have a regular show between Friday and Sunday. Um, so anyway, Friday show, we'll talk free throw differential. We'll talk Wolves Nuggets. We'll talk Wolves Bulls. Big show Friday. Lots to get to. Uh, so we'll do that uh, then. And, of course, live postcasts after the games this weekend as well. That's all we have for you today here on the show. A big thank you for making Lockdown Wolves your first listen every day. Of course, this show is free and available everywhere. That includes YouTube as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. You can also watch the show on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon Fire TV. And you can follow at X at Lockdown T Wolves and also at B Beacon with two B's, two E's, C K E N. A reminder that Lockdown has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube and now. It's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Lockdown Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Lockdown, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Lockdown Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Of course, the Lockdown Wolves podcast is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. 
The Lockdown Network is your local experts on all the biggest stories. Once again, I'm Ben Beacon. This is the Lockdown Wolves podcast, and we'll catch you next time.